When you're fishing, it doesn't matter how tall you are or how much you weigh. Neither are your age, social status, gender, and physical fitness of importance. All it takes is some fishing equipment, a good strategy, and knowing some helpful techniques. It's an astonishingly accessible recreational outdoor sport. But did you know it can be a shock to the system? For you and the fish. And in order to believe it, you just got to see it. Even if you've never actually caught a fish on your own, lucky for us, these attempts were caught on film. 15 Most Shocking Fishing Moments in the World, Part 2. Number 15. Extreme Noodling. This puts a whole new meaning to taking a deep dive into a hole. If you like river monsters, you'll love this. This is just a typical noodling trip in a big pipe on a river in central Oklahoma. No big deal. Except it is. Noodling isn't relaxing fishing. It's actually quite dangerous, which is part of its draw. Catfish are very strong, especially when they're fighting for their lives, and they can easily pull a person underwater. So you'll need to be a good swimmer to noodle, even in shallow waters. Some fishermen dare to noodle in water that's waist to chin deep, even in a huge pipe. Every noodler will tell you it's unsafe to noodle alone. Any hand fishing noodler needs a companion to help subdue a fish, extract his or her hand from a fish's maw, or pull him or her out by the feet when trouble strikes underwater. The pure strength of a startled catfish presents a risk of injury. If you don't get a good grip on the fish you're chasing, chances are it'll rock it out of its hole and straight into you which could knock the wind out of you or even break a few ribs. Catfish also have barbs on their pectoral fins that can sting or slice your skin as the fish speeds by. Now, let's get ready for today's open discussion. File this under Fisherman captures what no one was supposed to see. Because if this is what emerges from the ocean on your fishing trip, there's a problem. Under the glare of the hot sun, a statuesque shape suddenly lurches from the sea to face you. Surprise! What is this great mystery of the sea? What do you even do in this situation? Maybe it's a moving mythical monument from the lost city of Atlantis come to change the world. Some might think so. The idea of Atlantis, the lost island subcontinent often idealized as an advanced utopian society holding wisdom that could bring world peace, has captivated dreamers, occultists, and new agers for generations. Thousands of books, magazines, and websites are devoted to Atlantis, and it remains a popular topic. People have lost fortunes, and in some cases, even their lives looking for it. Talk about shocking fishing moments. Comment below with the hashtag open discussion. You want to know a little secret? If you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you'll have superpowers for the rest of your life. So what are you waiting for? Time to fly. Number 14 giant squid. For those of you that don't know, this is one of the most feared creatures on earth. The other is a giant squid. That's a little fisherman's humor in relation to this brave boater hauling this beast onto his boat. Because the ocean is vast and giant squid live deep underwater, they remain elusive and are rarely seen. Not today, however. The species was first recorded live in 2006 after researchers suspended bait beneath a research vessel off the coast of Agasawara Island in Japan to try and hook a giant squid. As the camera whirled, the research team pulled a 24-foot squid to the surface alive, enabling people around the world to finally see a living, breathing giant squid. Most of them get eaten by sperm whales each year. The giant regularly shows up inside sperm whale stomachs. Every single day, male whales put away 300 to 400 squid of various species, while females consume an outrageous 700 to 800. Should these rare squid represent even 1% of their diet, that's 131 million giant squid killed annually. Catching a giant squid is no laughing matter considering it's extremely rare. Giant squid live up to their name. The largest giant squid ever recorded by scientists was almost 43 feet long and may have weighed nearly a ton. Number 13. Goliath Grouper As you can see, catching these fish is close to impossible. Goliath grouper, as the name suggests, is a very large species of grouper, and they can achieve weights of over 800 pounds. The ones in these clips are approximately half that size, but even still, 
They're so large that they require specialized techniques to catch. These behemoths do not have a lot of stamina, and fights are often fairly brief on the super heavy tackle they require. But the first power run they take to the bottom will strain the arms of even the strongest anglers. If you can fish these guys with 90 pounds of drag and stand-up gear without a chair or harness, you're a goliath in your own right. Some of the really big ones are essentially impossible to land on rod and reel because no matter how strong your line is and how tight your drag, they'll just pull the boat backwards and break off at the rocks. Even the strongest rods will eventually get broken fishing for goliaths. If you survive the initial run and turn them, they usually tire fast and come to the boat. But goliaths are protected in the United States and must be released. Good luck finding many of them in places they are protected. They're too easy to target for spear fishermen, but there's nothing easy about this fishing footage. Number 12. Hungry Fish Have you ever tried fishing by hand? At a koi pond, for example, or even hand feeding a catfish like in this footage? Neither have we, but it looks like they love it. We're not sure we'd be so stoked to stick our fingers in a big fish's mouth, but hey, more power to you. Hand feeding is most popular among people who keep ponds and aquariums of goldfish, but there are other species that will happily eat from your hand, as you can see. Teaching your fish to eat from your hand is not entirely possible despite having a reputation for being less than smart. It's also a fun experience and it can be very helpful for your fish to be used to your hands, for example, when you need to examine possible injuries. It just takes some patience. To teach your fish to eat from your hand, patience is key. Before you start attempting to hand feed your fish, make sure your hands are absolutely clean. If the fish are already aware that you're the one that feeds them, for example, when they beg for food when you approach the tank, that's one step in the right direction. To get the fish to also associate your hand with something positive, start off by feeding them and leaving your hand in the water while they eat. Number 11. Ice Monster This fish is so big it barely fits through the hole in the ice. Meet the musky. The name originated from the Ojobi word that means great fish. They're usually up to 48 inches in length and up to 36 pounds in weight, but some have reached 6 feet and nearly 70 pounds too. Muskie is an oxygen-sensitive fish and the largest member of the pike family, and they're known to be aggressive apex predators, sometimes called the fish of 10,000 casts. And there's some truth to this, they can be elusive trophies, though the heart-pounding excitement of landing one keeps die-hard fans coming back season after season. Muskies especially thrive in and around the Great Lakes, including all five lakes and their surrounding rivers. Fishing the Great Lakes and surrounding areas provides anglers the best shot at landing one of these giant predators. But ice fishing for muskie is controversial, and for good reason. In their native habitat, muskies are carefully protected. Keep in mind, too, that it takes years for muskies to reach trophy size. That's a long time, and ice fishing isn't terribly friendly to big fish. Beyond the need for a safe season of muskie, pulling a trophy through a small hole is tough. And for these ice fishermen, this was their lucky day. Number 10. Big Belly Fish Seeing a puffer fish up close is one thing, but seeing a net full of these big bellied fish, that's something else altogether. These are aggressive fish that are willing to attack anyone they perceive as a threat. Puffers usually live alone and don't usually share their territory with other fish, so seeing so many together really is quite unique. These fish come in a wide variety of sizes, colors, and adaptations. Some are tiny and others weigh up to 30 pounds. Some of these fish have delicate spines, while others are covered in harsh spikes. However, they all share the same core feature, an air sac that can inflate when the fish feels threatened. These fish might look adorable when they're puffed up, but the truth is that this trait is an intimidating survival mechanism. Few predators will stick around to eat a fish that is suddenly doubled in visual size. One of the adaptations that helps the pufferfish survive is the ability to produce a poison secreted across their body, making puffers dangerous to touch and even more dangerous to consume. In addition to the famous puffing technique, pufferfish can also attack with their beak-like teeth, and they can be found in all of the warm regions of the world. Number 9. Good Samaritan Duck a video from Malaysia has surfaced which shows a friendly duck feeding fish from its own food bowl. In the heartwarming video, a female mallard duck is seen pecking at some grain in a big container that's placed over the water body. 
The duck dips its beak filled with grain into the water and a school of fish is seen eating the grains. The video shows the bird doing this frequently and it was shared on social media with the title, Duck Feeds Fish, and it wins hearts. Many reacted to the video saying that it was not very unusual behavior. Ducks are highly intelligent and emotional creatures. They can understand commands, play with toys, play games, give kisses, and beg for snuggles like other birds if you take the time to work with them. If handled frequently and gently from an early age, ducks will become quite sociable with people. And fish, apparently. As it eats, the duck dips its beak filled with grain into the water and a shoal of fish go nuts. The video first surfaced on a popular Brazilian fisherman's group on social media where it managed to garner over 11 million views. Since then, it's gone viral on multiple social media platforms. People praise the adorable fish and this duck gets all the points for its friendly feeding style. Number 8. Fishing Snake When fishing in the southern United States, you gotta watch out for those snakes. They compete with fishermen regularly for their prized catches. Meet the Diamondback Water Snake. They're commonly found in a wide array of aquatic habitats, margins, and shallows of lakes, ponds, rivers, smaller streams, swamps, marshes, canals, water tanks, and ditches. Diamondback water snakes are considered the largest of all North American water snake species. It's a fairly large and thick-bodied snake, with adult specimens reaching lengths from 3 to 5 feet, with a record length of 8.2. And as you can see, it turns into a tug-of-war between the snake and the fisherman. If cornered, these snakes will often hiss and flatten their heads or body to appear larger. Like most other water snakes, the diamondback water snake has an irritable temperament and will bite repeatedly if harassed or handled. They're non-venomous, so a bite from one is quite harmless, other than a few scratches or lacerations and possible infection. Even so, its bite can be a very painful experience. Due to its sharp teeth, designed to hold on a slippery fish, their favorite prey. Number 7. Bike Wheel Bow Fishing As you might have guessed, bow fishing is hunting fish using a bow and arrow. Sounds simple enough, right? Perhaps bow fishing comes with a few twists here and there, and no more is that evident than in this incredible fishing hack using a bike wheel to make the fishing bow. Talk about cycling. Now technically it may look like a bow, but it's actually more of a bow-like slingshot as it relies on the stretch of the string instead of the bow itself. Regardless though, it's a cool way to fish. This person chopped up a bicycle wheel, removed the spokes, and was left with a nice semicircle. Using regular old eyelets, he installed them around the perimeter, giving it a bit of a compounded bow look. He's even using rubber medical tubing with a section of bicycle inner tube in the middle, which provides a fold, allowing you to shoot arrows without knocks. For a bow made out of almost entirely recycled parts, it's pretty good. He's even made an arrow rest using the hub and a bent spoke. For years, many people wrote off bow fishing as just as archery enthusiasts or off-season bow hunters. This fishing technique has become a beloved sport for thousands of outdoor lovers. Fun and unique, bow fishing requires absolutely no previous angling experience. It's perfect for newbie fishers too. Number 6. UFO at Sea In 1994, these fishermen saw something unbelievable off the coast of Florida. At first, it's a strange light on the horizon, and not the sun. Then soon after, it turns into four clumps of mysterious lights. And when the camera zooms in up close, it looks like approximately a dozen UFOs hovering in the distance. This is not your average fishing trip by any means. First, you have to remember that a UFO is literally anything in the sky that can't be identified. Does that mean an alien life form? Maybe, maybe not. But did you know that the Sunshine State, aka Florida, may be one of the most likely places for sightings of unidentified flying objects in the United States? according to data compiled by online research. Florida ranked number two in states with the most UFO sightings, losing out only to California. Documented sightings include reports of unexplained bright lights in the sky or fast-moving shapes not resembling planes or helicopters. Florida has a total of 7,513 documented cases. That's roughly over 30 sightings for every 100,000 people in the Sunshine State. And almost 30 years after this fishing video, the only thing being caught on this fishing trip was everybody's attention. Number 5. Fish Slides 
Ever heard of a fishing ladder? It enables fish to pass around barriers by swimming and leaping up a series of relatively low steps, hence the term ladder, into the waters on the other side. Fish slides, however, are entirely different. As you can see, it's a very humane way to release your fish, and it looks like fun too. Plus, catching then releasing fish is a great way to get your fishing fix satisfied and a responsible way to help maintain fish populations. The most important aspect of successful catch and release fishing is using appropriate fishing methods and gear for the size and species of fish you're pursuing. The right tools for the job decrease the fish's stress and increase its chance of survival after release. When this practice is in effect, anglers carefully and immediately return the fish according to requirements of size and species to the water where it was caught. So, why not try a fish slide? When done correctly, catch and release methods result in high survival rates, but catching and releasing fish successfully takes practice. You'll want to minimize stress and injury to the fish. So, a fish slide might be your best option. As the TikTok video perfectly puts it, fish just want to have fun. Number 4. Ghost Fish A fisherman was left baffled when he caught this see-through shrimp-like creature swimming near the surface of the ocean. They were fishing 43 miles off New Zealand's Kakari Peninsula when he spotted the translucent shrimp floating near the top of the water. So he got in the boat. It's a saupa, a kind of marine invertebrate. Saups, as they're commonly known, are found in both equatorial and cold seas, so the waters around this peninsula would be more than suitable for the translucent sea creature. They're spotted swimming alone just as often as they're seen in long, string-like colonies and move by pumping water through their gelatinous bodies. As a harmless creature that feeds only on plankton, a saup's see-through body is believed to be designed to avoid it being spotted by predators when floating near the surface. And despite looking rather like a jellyfish, they're a group of animals also known as sea squirts. They're taxonomically closer to humans than jellyfish. They just look like ghosts of the sea. Saups have a complex lifestyle growing so fast that they can grow to maturity in 48 hours. They're thought to be the fastest growing multicellular animal on Earth, increasing their body length by up to 10% an hour. Number 3. Piranha Fishing They're relatively small in size, ranging on average from 5 to 14 inches, and their reputation as a predator makes them one of the most feared fish in the world. Piranha are freshwater fish infamous for their very sharp triangular-shaped teeth and strong jaws that produce a forceful bite. Believe it or not, piranhas are actually also a dish you can eat. Piranhas are an important source of food in the wetlands of the Amazon jungle in South America, and this fishing fiend is going to have a piranha feast. Just look at how many of those little devils he's hauling in. With a boat, some string, and some raw meat on a hook, you too can feast on piranha while you fish here. This is actually a practical way of catching them because their teeth can destroy fishermen's nets and they're risky to extract when tangled. You don't want to expose your fingers to these little devils. The risks aside, piranha are said to be very tasty, and one popular way of cooking them is in caldo de piranha, aka piranha soup. They can be found in multiple places in South America. Not only are their piranha fishermen a famous sight to see while traversing around the Amazon, but piranha fishing is a custom around the world where these ferocious fish live. Number 2. Electroshock Check out this huge school of carp being captured by electrofishing. Wildlife officers in Kentucky and Tennessee have teamed up to study an invasive fish species. Their approach? What they call getting the jump on this problematic invasive species. By shocking fish they're attacking native aquatic populations, they can gain control over this dynamic ecosystem. Authorities used electrofishing equipment to stun fish, and it was all caught on camera. Electrofishing relies on two electrodes, which deliver direct current at high voltage through the water. Usually, a post-direct current is applied, which causes an uncontrolled muscular convulsion that results in the fish being stunned. The technique temporarily stuns them, which can allow biologists to collect them for study. The carp caught in this video, however, were eventually harvested and given to commercial anglers for sale at markets. Electrofishing is a common scientific survey method used to sample fish populations to determine abundance, density, and species composition. When performed correctly, electrofishing results in no permanent harm to the fish, which return to their natural mobility state in as little as two minutes after being caught.
Number 1. Watermelon fishing and the award for most unusual ways to catch a fish goes to the watermelon. Literally, a hole cut into the fruit is the way the fish gets in and they stay for the fruity feast. And this watermelon fisherman has some eel fish and some catfish to take home. As you can see, it does require a little bit more finesse, a knife, some tape, a string, and yes, some worms. After digging up some fresh worms from the wet soil on the shore, the carved out watermelon gets stuffed with the bait. It then gets filled with water and sunk to the bottom of the shallow waters. A stick is used to mark the spot, and a day later, it's time to collect the fish in your watermelon fish trap. Booyah! There's a lot of work that goes into this inventive way of catching your supper, and you'll most likely be getting very, very wet setting and retrieving those traps. But the best part is that it's very cost effective, and you can feast on watermelon as you prepare the trap. And you get the bragging rights to be held as watermelon fishing wizard when you get home. It's really a great way to reuse the stuff you would normally compost. Watermelon fishing is very eco-friendly. Nothing can compare to the thrill of catching a fish. Hopefully these videos are the fix you need if you're not much of a fishing person. Who knew fishing could be so shocking? There are more moments coming up, so stick around for more great videos.